anytime you're messing around with IGF-1, you're gonna have a dangerous risk in cancer long-term, okay? It's, it has to be said, the source. Where are you getting these peptides from? Because even, namely guys, arguably, not arguably, this is true, even if you're getting peptides which are not dangerous and using them either under doctor supervision or, you know, or, or not, even if you're getting peptides which are not dangerous, if the source that you're getting them from is bad, uh, you're going to have problems and it's going to be dangerous. You go online, you don't know the purity, you don't know the potency, and you don't even know uh, if there's heavy metals in there or, uh, you know, if it is what it says it is on the bottle. What if somebody mixed something up? Yeah, yo, what's going on guys? Seth Spartan here, nutrition training and hormone expert and Prometheus Pro Bodybuilder with Prometheus HRT, the world's best testosterone and hormone replacement clinic. Use my code SPARTAN to save on either testosterone or HGH replacement therapy. Guys, today we're going to be talking about peptides. Are they dangerous? This is probably one of the most important videos uh, that I will do. Uh, arguably ever. Why? Because there is so much misinformation with peptides. So let's get into this. Peptides, are they dangerous? The answer is yes, absolutely. And at the same time, no, they are not dangerous. Why is, why is this the case? Why is there a split answer, if you would? The reason for this, guys, is simple. is because peptides in general, peptides, the class of drugs, uh, hormones that encompass peptides in general, have a wide range or variety of effects, uh, and we're gonna talk about this. So, peptides, are they dangerous? Yes, let's dive into this side for, first and explain why peptides can be uh, extremely dangerous. Number one, guys, adipotide. Adipotide. Uh, this drug is extremely, it's terrible. It's extremely dangerous, and it's been used by bodybuilding, athletics, and fitness people. I'm sure it's been used by actors and other people that are trying to get in shape and get as lean as possible. Uh, think about in the movie industry and the Hollywood industry too, there's a lot of uh, anorexia and other things and people are willing to do anything or whatever to uh, stay super lean and shredded. So, peptides, are they dangerous? Yes, let's talk about this side of the coin, adipotide. So, this drug, guys, is basically a peptide which kills, yeah, that's right, essentially it kills uh, the smaller blood vessels that feed sub-Q body fat. So basically killing the smaller blood vessels that are feeding the fat tissue, thereby what? Killing the fat tissue and, you know, uh, you know, getting rid of it. Having said that, adipotide also has a nice, nice, and when I say nice, I mean sarcastic, nice, as a nasty side effect of also inducing the same damage where in the kidneys where all those blood vessels come in so what you are doing is yeah you're gonna yeah you're gonna kill the fat cells but you're also gonna kill your kidneys that's that's basically what's going on with this drug so uh, adipotide extremely dangerous you know even if this drug is not approved for human use and even if it was i would tell people do not use this drug you know do a you know come to me or i guess i'm not coaching right now but i could refer you to plenty other good uh, coaches or uh, nutritionists, you know, get a good diet, you know, uh, get moving, you know, an activity regimen and use HGH either, you know, through Prometheus, HRT or some other clinic, you know, studies show that if, uh, if you're taking HGH or HGH levels are boosted up, think uh, using HGH releasing peptides, you burn about 50% more fat. So there's no need for this. But anyways, guys, adipotide, extremely dangerous terrible peptide never use even if it even if it was approved for human use you know i would tell you guys never use it moving on man i talked a lot about on that but that that needed to be stated uh moving on igf1 lr3 uh this is not such a dangerous drug but it is still in the dangerous camp why because igf1 lr3 can do two things one the most immediate thing is cause severe 
um, cause severe drop in blood sugar. You can go very hypoglycemic taking IGF-1, LR3. You know, I know, I, I've been in the world of bodybuilding athletics. I know how dangerous IGF-1, LR3. Uh, basically, you know, IGF-1 also shares uh, the ability to bind to uh, the insulin or to bind to uh, receptor sites much like insulin. So IGF-1 can, uh, I think it's about 20% uh, the effect of blood sugar drop compared to insulin. But the thing is, is that it's an LR3. Uh, it's going to have a long, long half-life. I remember it's about 20, 24 hours, if memory serves me correctly. So IGF-1, LR3, dangerous immediate effects can be, it can make you extremely hypoglycemic, even more so if you're training or you're a bodybuilder. Number two, guys, another reason I, I would say this, you know, this peptide is extremely dangerous uh, is just because Anytime you're messing around with IGF-1, you're going to have a dangerous risk in cancer long term, okay? It's, it has to be said, bodybuilders and people want to shove this under the rug, but this, is, this, this, this has to be talked about. I'm going to talk about it, okay? Unbiased, uncensored, right, guys? IGF-1 deaths, not so dangerous in terms of uh, blood sugar drop, but still uh, that effect is there. Again, think 20% the rate of insulin. Uh, but the main problem with IGF-1 deaths, why is, why can this peptide be dangerous? Again, you can cause, uh, cancer growth. Okay. I mean, plain and simple, uh, moving on, uh, insulin, Pe insulin falls under the peptide camp. Also insulin, uh, what, what's going to be the most dangerous thing with insulin guys, unfortunately it's going to be, you know, there's bodybuilders that have died from insulin use, um, uh, either taking black market insulin or they take too much insulin or they take it in combination with IGF-1 or their blood sugar was low already, insulin is an extremely dangerous uh, peptide. Um, you know, I would, so these four, I could have made this list longer guys, but these four, extremely dangerous. This demonstrates that, uh, you know, peptides, are they dangerous? Yes, absolutely peptides are dangerous. Yes, they are. And at the same time, no, they are not. So we covered yes, gave you an example of some extremely dangerous peptides. Now let's talk about peptides. Are they dangerous? No. Why they wouldn't be. So guys, over on this side of the board, we have peptides like GHRP6, GHRP2, uh, hexorelin, ipomorelin, samorelin, HGH, CJC1295 DAC, CJC1295 no DAC, also known as ModGRF. Uh, these are examples of peptides which are not dangerous, that, that uh, can be used um, you know, under doctor supervision, or if they're legal in your country, uh, there are peptides that can be used safely. Um, but uh, the big take home here, guys, is, is that while there are peptides that are extremely dangerous, especially when used incorrectly, some are dangerous no matter what, uh, you know, there are peptides that are extremely safe. You know, we have the GHRPs, GHRP6, GHRP2, hexarelin, ipomorelin. Uh, these four fall under, under the class of growth hormone secreting peptides, uh, with ipomorelin being the best out of all of them, bang per buck, uh, sides per, you know, negatives per positives, uh, hexarelin being the second after ipomorelin. Uh, samorelin's kind of weak, that's, that's, I, that's basically garbage. I'll talk about that more in another video. And we have things like HGH, which absolutely can be used safely, um, but so you have all these peptides and you have all these peptides. So peptides, are they dangerous? Yes, they are. And no, they're not at the same time because peptides are so broad and we have so many different kinds of peptides uh, available for usage. Um, so the thing is, guys, is that I want to finish this video off by saying something extremely important. Please pay attention to this. The source, guys, whether we're talking about pept whether we're talking about dangerous peptides or not dangerous peptides, it all comes back, it all comes into the source. Where are you getting these peptides from? Because even namely guys, arguably, not arguably, this is true, even if you're getting peptides which are not dangerous and using them either under doctor supervision or, you know, or, or not, even if you're getting peptides which are not dangerous, if the source that you're getting them from is bad, uh, you're going to have problems and it's going to be dangerous. And now why do I say this? It's because, you know, at least in the U.S. and actually a lot of other countries, you can go online, you can order peptides, uh, you know, it's completely legal to possess peptides, right? So the thing is, is that, you know, you, you go online, you don't know the purity, you don't know the potency, and you don't even know uh, if there's heavy metals in there or 
uh, you know, if it is what it says it is on the bottle, what if somebody mixed something up? They're not made in, um, uh, you know, strict, uh, strict ISO uh, approved labs. That's the big problem. Okay, so it's, it's really a shoot um, as far as, and research grade chemicals are not made anywhere near, um, anywhere near uh, the scrutiny that uh, human grade peptides would be. So, you know, I wish somebody told me this earlier, but my advice to you guys would be, you know, if you want, you know, I would advise you guys to stay away from these peptides, even if you're doing this under doctor supervision or uh, with a prescription. I know IGF-1 LR3 can be, can be prescribed in some cases, uh, but I would stay away from these completely. Please do yourself a favor and, you know, your loved ones, stay away from these and anything like it. And as for uh, the not dangerous peptides, go to Prometheus HRT, sign up. You can get a lot of these peptides, guys, a lot of these safe peptides, you know, whether it's GHRP6, 2, Hexrel, Ephemeral, and some more HGH, CJC, DAC, NODAC, Mod, GRF. You can get a lot of these peptides from Prometheus HRT. Use my code SPARTAN to save cash again. Um, but you can get a lot of these peptides there or any other good uh, hormone replacement clinic. Um, and the thing is, is that they're prescription grade, human grade, and um, there's also stabilizing agents added in. So, you know, the vial doesn't go bad immediately like they would at, you know, getting at some ratty online store. Uh, so guys, that's pretty much it. Peptides, are they dangerous? Both yes and no. Extremely important video to discuss. Seth Spartan, keep submitting your questions and we are out of here.